so I'm pretty tired, shattered in fact, is how I'd describe it. Uh, I was up at three o'clock this morning, um, only a couple of hours sleep, get down to Heathrow and get on the plane to southern Austria. And I flew into uh, Vienna and then got a connecting flight to Graz. Um, and the flights went pretty well, at least I thought they did because I've <laughs> got to uh, Graz to find out that my bags are still in London. So at the moment um, I've managed to uh, beg, borrow and, well not steal, <laughs> I've certainly borrowed a bit of gear and I've managed to get um, set up and get some rods out anyway. I'm on a, a lovely gravel pit in southern Austria. It is a cracking place and it's it's got some lovely fishing. I've seen a few pictures of them and they're absolutely gorgeous fish, dark and scaly and, and big with it. Um, I'd feel a lot happier with my own gear, which is, is why I don't mind driving to places really. Although, you know, it's a bit of a slog driving to all these places and a lot quicker flying. The problem with flying is they lose your baggage. And they've done it to me a few times now. They did it in America, uh, did it in Hungary, and now they've done it again here. So hopefully all my own gear well, most of it's going to turn up tomorrow so I feel a bit happy with that but like I say you know the, the guys here um, have been very very helpful and, and sorted me out with enough kit to at least get me fishing tonight so who knows um, I mean I don't know if anything's going to happen tonight you know it's it's been a bit quiet for a couple of weeks by the sounds of it uh, and just started to pick up in the last few days so well, I timed it just right I mean the weather is absolutely gorgeous and I'm sitting here in the t-shirt like it's a summer's day uh, and it's virtually November, it's the last few days of October and, and while it's cooling down elsewhere this part of Austria is actually very nice, you know, it, it's easy to see why the fish grow well in this part of the world because it's, it's lovely and warm and sunny. Um, so I'm going to get a good night's kit tonight, hopefully my gear's here tomorrow. Um, but who knows, you know, I might even get one tonight, so I don't know if I want to catch one or not. I certainly want a good night's sleep, but I suppose a fish always makes me feel a bit better anyway, so, well, I suppose it's a win-win situation. If I don't get a fish, I'll get a good night's kip, and if I do get a fish, I'll be happy with that anyway, so <laughs> everyone's a winner. So, first cup of tea of the trip, and uh, hopefully the first fish soon. <laughs> Well, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is, the gear's finally arrived. Whew, so that's a relief anyway. All my uh, gear, my new reels and everything that were left behind in London have finally turned up. A uh, guy brought them all the way down in a taxi, so it must cost them a bit returning all this lost gear. So you'd think they'd just cut their losses and try and get it right in the first place. But there we go, that's the good news. I've got my gear anyway. Bad news is uh, nothing so far. I mean, it's not really bad news because it's lovely here, but um, one night in, one night and one day, and uh, nothing to report yet. There's a couple of other people on the lake and they've had nothing either. In fact, the last fish was um, five days ago from somewhere down along that bank. So it sounds like through September it was fishing quite well, but into October, it's uh, gone very quiet, they sort of shut up shop, which is a bit of a shame, but there is still a chance, you know, I mean, well, to be honest, a lot of people think sometimes that I get things handed on the plate and uh, I just turn up at these lakes full of easy fish, and swims have been baited for me and, you know, it's just a matter of getting them out, but of course it's not like that in reality and, uh, you know, I'm here just the same as everyone else, it's a time for a a bit of struggling, a bit of hard work, but um, there is a chance, you know, I, I feel confident that I'm going to get one or two this week at some stage. So there we go, I've got the key cray with me anyway. Nice labels on the bags out here now, first time I've seen them, but um, I've done alright on this so far, so hopefully uh, gonna, it's going to be to liking in here. got a little snowman, size uh, 6 
fang twister that is, just a basic co coated combi link, hook length, little snowman, uh, quite a heavy six ounce lead. And what it is, a lot of the bottom's soft here, I know that. I haven't got an echo sounder, you know, that's another thing with flying, you're so limited with what you can bring. Um, I love using an echo sounder, but just haven't got one. So what I'm having to do, uh, markers have been put in place by the guys who sort of fish these swims all the time, so I'm not going to move them, but they are marking sort of reasonably good areas. I might try different ones if they don't work, but basically what I'm doing is filling for hard spots. There's quite a bit of weed out there, strange sort of weed, quite hard, sort of tough weed, but um, in amongst that there's, there's clearer spots and there's harder spots. See that, yeah, see I can feel weed there straight away, so. Yeah, see, there you go. Could actually feel that the lead landing in amongst that on the bottom, so I don't want to be fishing in amongst that. But somewhere around here. There we go, solid as a rock there. And that feels about right, so. I'm going to put a bit in, not, not loads, because I don't see the i putting loads in, but the other guy's put in a fair old bit, so... Obviously the fish are used to finding big groups of bait here, so... It makes sense to put a bit out. As according to them, some of their groups of bait have been going lately. They've been getting cleared, so... Well see what happens. I can always leave this out for two or three days anyway. There we go. Done before the swans can get it. <laughs> Just have a look at that. Just an epic battle out in the boat, well over half hour. I was just sitting by the rods when it went off, so I couldn't grab the, the camera quick enough, but can you see the scales on that? What an absolutely gorgeous fish. Not weighed it yet, literally just landed it, but that's, that's well over 50 pound at least. Absolutely gorgeous. Great big Austrian mirror. Yes, what a result. Well, I can't believe what a fish this is. It's not only an incredible looking fish, it's 32 and a half kilos, which is, uh, well, it's well over 70 pound. But not only that, well, let me just show you, because this fish is absolutely incredible. Look at that, look at the scales on it. There's even more this side. Well, it was a fight and a half out in the boat. I was just sitting there by the rods and the sounder box was in the bivvy. So I didn't hear anything other than the, the spool on the reel going. And that was the start of an epic battle out in the boat, over half hour. And it felt big, but I didn't realize it was this big. Over 70 pound of Austrian mirror. And uh, well, I'm gonna have to show you the other side of this because it's absolutely incredible. If you think that, oh, a bit tight there. You think that side's nice? Just have a look at that side as well. What an amazing fish. I know there were some beauties in this lake, but that's incredible. November the 1st. Amazing. I'm going to have to put him down as he's so heavy, but I'm so happy with that. Amazing. Well, that is one incredible fish. What an amazing place, what an amazing fish. God, 70 pound of Austrian mirror. Wow. Wow.
the sun's lovely and bright. I don't know if you can see, I'm, I've slackened the lines right off. So the water's quite clear out there, very clear in fact. If you can see, they're just hanging very limply off the rod tips there, just straight down to the bottom. And uh, I've actually taken the, the slap head indicators, loosened them right off. I did have, have them on there and I had the lines sort of semi-slack to start with, but I was getting quite a few liners, so fish were obviously in the area. Um, but fish bumping into the lines, it didn't seem to spook them that much, but I'm sure it would if they kept doing it. So basically what I've done is just slack them right off. It's fairly open water out there, apart from the weed beds. But there we go, so slack line fishing in Austria. But um, I think it's what's needed here in, in the clear water. Well, early hours again, got another absolute cracker. And, uh, well, I didn't think it was going to be a big one, to be honest. It didn't fight so hard as the other one, but it's a, another absolute beast of a fish. Uh, 60 pound, 10 ounce. And just, look at that. Let me see, another one with these big apple slice scales all the way down its back. And they're absolutely gorgeous fish, they really are. Come from the same spot as the, the first big one. And, uh, they were showing, they were more active in the evening, yesterday evening, uh, not in front of me, but on the other side of the lake. But, uh, you know, I thought, well, I've put the food in, so if they're hungry, they might come to it, and sure enough, this one did. But um, after a slow start, three days, three nights without a fish, it's now sort of starting to turn on, so there could be more to come, but it's absolutely brilliant stuff, and I'm absolutely loving this. Well, second one of the morning, and another gorgeous fish. I can't believe how many nice fish there are in there. This one was 45 and a half, and uh, it was funny because the one I had earlier, when I recast it, I actually recast it to the wrong marker, a bit of an idiot. Um, so I had two rods on the same marker, and when I realized this morning, reeled one in and recast it, and the rod that was still there produced this one. <laughs> so. I don't know, perhaps the fish was sitting there and saw the rig go flying out of the swim and thought it was safe. Uh, but either way, another screaming run, hard fighting fish, an absolute beauty. I'll show you the other side because, the, again, the scales are just incredible. If that was a fish in a normal lake, this would be the one that everyone's after. But in here, it's just one of those scaly fish. It's an amazing place, it really is. Um, and that's three fish now, three big ones, so happy days. Right, so if we have a, a quick look at the, the rig, it's fairly basic stuff as always. But if you notice, it's not attached to the, the rig itself at the moment, or the main line. Because um, on the end, I've got one of these quick change links. And that serves two purposes, really. The main one being that when I've landed a fish, rather than carrying the fish up with the rig still attached or all the main line still attached or trying to unhook it in the net which is always a bit of a nightmare I can just unclip that from the the lead and the, the main line and just carry the fish up in the sling 
with only that attached so it's better for the fish and makes life easier and after I've attached it to the rig which I'll do in a minute I'll pull a bit of uh, silicon tubing 2 mil silicon tubing up over it and that stops any problems with it slipping or possibly getting tangled up so it just keeps it all safe so the rig itself is a, a size 5 twister just sort of not list knotted but sort of KD style four turns hair out then another four turns and back through the eye and I always put a little bit of silicon tubing just over the eye it just kicks it out at a nice angle and it keeps everything in place like I say you know it is it's simple it's always simple and baits are just two of the key cray straight bottom baits I don't mind using uh, snowman's every now and then but um, I'm a big believer of putting stuff on the hair that you're, you're putting out as freebies so literally just two of those because my way of thinking is if you're putting out 200 freebies and expecting the carp to eat them then why put out something different on the hair and expect them to eat that you know if they're going to eat 200 freebies then they can eat 202 and the extra two has got the hook attached to it so there we go that half inch three quarter an inch gap between hook and the two baits um, I don't mind having them quite tight actually to the uh, hook but what happens in the water they swell up anyway so by the time they swelled up after a few hours the gap is less but it's it's just about right so there we go simple rig and then like I say all I have to do is attach it there we go that's now on the the main line to the leg clip pull up the tubing over it and that stops anything slipping there we go and and there we go that's the finished rig ready to go three and a half ounce casting lead because uh, I'm, I'm trying to go out in the boat as little as possible here it's about 10 foot deep 12 foot deep and quite clear and rumor has it and I'm sure they're right that the guys are saying that if you go out in the boat too much it does tend to spook the fish so I'm, I'm going out as little as possible just to put the bait out once a day at most once every two days I'm planning to do it um, and then just casting the rigs out so there we go um, normal lead clip on there with the the rubber not pushed on very far three and a half ounce casting lead two bottom baits on a simple rig it's all pretty simple stuff as always but it doesn't have to be complicated to catch carp it just has to be right and and that's right so there we go get that one out now and uh, you never know it might just do the job Well, another cracking fish, early morning again, Thursday morning now, and for once, not a scaly one actually, quite a plain one this one, but uh, a gorgeous fish nonetheless, 46 pounds 10 ounce, uh, and from a, a new spot, Chris had markers, the owner, he had markers out there, he was baiting every week, and one on the left, he said, uh, he would not had anything on that, so I said, do you mind if I move it? So I moved it over to the right, where I'd seen a couple of fish show. And sure enough, this was the one that went off, so... I'll just show you. Like I say, absolutely gorgeous fish. Not a scaly one, but uh, what a fish, eh? Felt like an absolute beast when I was playing it. And it was one of those cases that if I'd lost it, I would have said I'd just lost an 80 pounder because my knees were trembling and uh, I was shaking as I was bringing it in and it felt like a ton weight uh, and yeah still a good fish obviously 46.10 so uh, I'm certainly not complaining because it's been tough on here and uh, things seem to be happening now anyway so oh it's good it'd be a shame to leave here actually but still a couple of nights left so still a chance for a few more like this I hope anyway
Well, it's my last fall day on the lake, Friday morning, and uh, looks like it's going to be another nice day, but it hasn't actually been a great last 12 hours, really. Um, yesterday evening, one of the guys, Christoph, come round and we was chatting, and it was just, it was dark, it was about six, seven o'clock, and he just said to me, what time are you getting the bites? And I said, well, mainly in the morning, and with that, one rattled off, out of the blue, first evening take, actually. Um, but a couple of seconds and it fell off anyway, which well, it's one of those things, isn't it? You can't do nothing about it. Sometimes it's going to happen. But there we go, I got the rod back out, thinking uh, this morning that I'd get another chance, and sure enough, 8 o'clock, off it's gone, same rod, rattled off, and it got caught round the marker pole. You know, there's marker poles that have been in situation all year here, and normally they're okay, and um, they're a different sort of pole, saying that's what I've used before. And the line actually got jammed in the sections where they joined together. And, um, well, the fish was pulling the marker pole all over the place. And there's a, like a two and a half kilo weight on the end, so it was a lot of strain on the line. But I went in the boat anyway, pulled myself out to the marker pole, and the fish was still on, pulling the pole about. I got the pole, um, pulled it up, and the line was right tightly jammed in the, the joint section. Uh, and managed to, to get it out eventually. It took a bit of a job, but the fish was gone. By the time I'd dropped the marker pole and tightened up the line, it was, it was already gone, the fish. So a little bit disappointed, you know, well, very disappointed, really, because having seen the quality of the fish, you know, who knows what I've lost? You know, and it's a, hook pulls, they're going to happen. They happen sometimes, but, you know, getting caught around the marker pole like that, I've heard of it happening, it's the first time it's actually ever happened to me, so it's a bit of a freak one. Um, yeah, so disappointing, and especially when I've, I've had the fish within sort of a, a few yards of me by the boat as well. So, but, you know, it's gone, there's nothing I can do, so I've got the rod back out now. I've got till about this time tomorrow, so hopefully I'll get another chance anyway. And it, I mean, I've had a great week, don't get me wrong, but it'd just be nice to end on a high with a, a fish at the end of the trip rather than a couple of losses so uh, you know fingers crossed to get another one before I have to go Well, it's my last morning on the lake. Cold, frosty morning. I'm going to have to be fairly quick because my battery's flashing red. It's nearly dead. But I've got one more. And I'll tell you what, back to the scaly ones. Just have a look at this. Because <laughs> what a fish, eh? 42 pound, nine ounce. And what an absolutely gorgeous fish. I was hoping to get one more. And this was it. <laughs> Oh, on, on the marker I moved again the other day. Absolutely over the moon with this. So I've still got a, a chance for another one in the next few hours, but uh, what a way to end the trip, eh? It's been a fantastic trip. It's a brilliant lake uh, with some fantastic fish, as you've seen. And this is just another one of them. What a place, eh? What a fish. <laughs> just try and turn him around because let's turn him around and sling quickly, be easier. Just look at that. Aren't they absolutely amazing fish? Oh, thank you Ostia, thank you Chris, thank you the carp. So I feel sort of privileged to catch these fish. Outstanding. Whew. Well that's it, got to get him back, start packing up now, got to fly back to England this afternoon, so there we go, happy days, see you next time.